Welcome, climate viewers, to a throwback Thursday for weather modification history. Did you know that they want to melt the Arctic? They always have wanted to melt the Arctic, despite everything that you've heard about the possibility of saving the Arctic, you know, because of polar bears and crap. Um, since the 1800s, they've been talking about melting the Arctic on purpose and that there's a new cold war for Arctic drilling. So in this throwback Thursday weather modification history video, we're gonna go through the brief history, which is not so brief, but um, we're gonna go through the details of how people have always wanted to and continue to want to intentionally melt the Arctic and how they're doing it. So uh, let's dig right in, shall we? If you're watching somewhere else on BitChute, Odyssey, Rumble, on my other channels, um, hold your nose, come over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit subscribe on the other channels as well, and you can support this by going to connect.climateviewer.com. Let's get it. So over on weathermodificationhistory.com, the greatest, most comprehensive, bestest, place on the internet for factual information it's encyclopedic in scope says so right there um you can come to the interactive timeline and on there you can actually sort through all of this stuff and if you just click geoengineering it'll filter out everything and we're going to get to this section right here um which is the melt the arctic archives now there's way more stuff going on in uh the you know, if you come over to the newspaper section, you can actually see much more of this because um, we have over 875 newspaper articles. So there's way more information in here. So I'm, I'm highlighting the major, you know, the major points of this um, to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, but we're going to go right to 1887. And our first up, we have reroute warm ocean currents to melt the polar ice caps, 1887, in um, an article that was titled How to Change the North American Climate. And uh, this was uh, from Polar Eclipse, and you can actually see that here and read all about it. This is an original document, um, as are all of the things I'm about to show you, uh, but they go into details on, you know, all the way back in 1887, how we could uh, change the frozen uh, tundra of the North Pole into temperate and uh, great for, you know, hanging out on the beach on the North Pole. That'd be a good thing. Um, and then we have Jules Verne. You may have heard of him. Fire a cannon to tilt Earth's axis and melt the poles. Um and in in one of his uh you know it, the the book was called um a, it's got two different titles actually topsy turvy and the purchase of the north pole um and you can see those here and some of the illustrations of that here and his idea was to fire a cannon and this was uh the cannon's bore in a mountainside um and them actually firing the cannon to tilt the axis of the planet um and this is back in 1890 okay so now we, we haven't even made it to 1900 and we've already got two examples um of crazy people talking about doing crazy things to to melt the poles uh back at it um and by the way uh did that happen um didn't didn't something like that happen? oh yeah there was um in uh, the Sumatra earthquake in 2004 and the Japanese earthquake in 2011 shifted Earth's axis by seven um, centimeters and 17 centimeters, respectively. And that comes from a paper called Importance of Returning Earth's Axis to Its Original Direction. Um, so did they actually tilt the axis of the Earth? Was it intentional or were these earthquakes just lucky? Oh, by the way, uh, their, their solution for returning um, Earth back to its original access, uh, pretty interesting stuff. 
uh, proposed solutions in order to return Earth's axis to its original direction. There are several proposals. One of them is to counteract by work of discharging large energy through huge bombing in a small uninhabited island. This explosion and energy emitted will produce an opposite reaction to the earthquake in Japan, which will help return Earth's axis to its normal position. Wait a minute. That sounds exactly like what Jules Byrne was talking about. Let's fire a big cannon and rock the planet back to where it was. Oh, but it's already in a new position, and that's not a good thing for the Arctic. It might melt it. Um, end of I Iceberg Menace 1912. Um, and you can see that right here, right here to move earth and melt the pole, a $190 million Newfoundland jetty would cause axis to shift again. Are we starting to see a pattern here? End of iceberg menace plan to send Gulf stream unchilled into Arctic's heart, abolishing fogs and extreme cold. Those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. And history always is a predictor of the present and future. And that is why weather modification history exists. Um, read all about it here. Links in the details. All of these have references where they came from. This is from timesmachine.newyorktimes.com. So this was published in the New York Times in 1912. Um, you can see the original document here simply by going to it. Um, like so and there's the entire article um very well documented links in the details already so uh jump on that all right so there's another one for melting the the poles by tilting the earth's axis what about space mirrors to focus sunlight and melt polar ice caps proposed building giant mirrors on space station to focus the sun's radiation on earth's surface making the north habitable and freeing sea lanes for to siberian harbors herman oberth german hungarian physicist and engineer um and this was in 1929 um, and this I actually pulled this out of a reference from the government called Climate Engineering Technical Status Future Direction and Potential Responses, published in 2011. And the original um, The Problem of Space Travel, Travel the Rocket Motor, um, has the book reference from the original quote. And this is what uh, they came up with the most dreadful weapon. It's pretty, pretty um, crazy stuff. But like any other technical achievement, the space mirror could also be employed for military purposes. Furthermore, it would be a most horrible weapon, far surpassing all previous weapons. It is well known that fairly significant temperatures can be generated by concentrating the sun's rays using a concave mirror in a manner similar to using a so-called burning glass. Um, I was a Boy Scout. I've done this many times where you take a magnifying glass and you start a fire with it. I think we've, we've all probably done some, well, not everybody. Anyway, moving on. Um, even when a mirror has only the size of a human hand, it's possible to ignite a handheld piece of paper or even wood shavings. Very simply, uh, in its focus, imagine that a diameter of a mi mirror of this type is not just 10 centimeters, but rather several hundreds or even thousands of meters as would be the case for a space mirror. Then even steel would have to melt and refractory materials would hardly be able to withstand heat over long periods of times if they were exposed to solar radiation, man, solar radiation of an enormous concentration. Now, if we visualize that the observer in, spa in the space station using his powerful telescope can see the entire combat area spread out before him like a giant plan showing even the smallest details, he could burn that mother down um now of course the idea of using space mirrors to melt the poles could that have ever occurred who else might have thought of something like that what about the nazis the nazi sun gun aimed to burn cities using huge space mirrors uh of course this was a uh, world war ii and um 
back then, the German space mirror. Nazi men of science seriously planned to use man-made satellite as a weapon for conquest. Just a proposal? What about this one? Space sunshades, time to ditch the sunscreen. Now they're actually saying, well, you know, to actually cool the planet, we could use mirrors in space for geoengineering to reflect sunlight away. But wait, there's, you know, always a catch. Uh, Nova Sviet new light experiment, cosmonauts control experiment on the mirror, observes light spot um, using a mirror in space, then reflector film, and then light spot on the ground. The second failed experiment of the Znam Znamia <laughs> 2.5 1999, a geoengineering space mirror would be faced away from Earth and reduce solar insulation reaching the earth. Um, and the idea, you know, that they would put mirrors in space to reflect sunlight away also could just as easily be turned into a Nazi sun gun. Um, so it's always that way. Um, and finally on this topic, BAE Systems Laser Developed Atmospheric Lens, um, which is basically... Harp technology that's been repurposed, the idea of the artificial ionospheric mirror. I covered this in a video uh, back in, uh, let's see, what is this? Uh, 2017, January 16th, 2017. And it was based on this article, the future of spying Earth's atmosphere can be turned into a massive surveillance system using lasers. Scientists discover British firm unveils research which shows the atmosphere could be used to spy on ordinary citizens in unprecedented detail. And how would they do that? They use laser beams to create an atmospheric lens. A mirror, uh, a magnifying glass of sorts that instead of creating an artificial ionospheric mirror like HARP can create to reflect radio waves off, they would actually paint lines with a laser very rapidly, just in a pattern, burn, burn some lasers into the upper ionosphere. And that could then create a magnifying glass that they could use spy you know, satellites to look through, to be able to count the noses, you know, your nostril hairs. It would be that. Um, But the same would be true if you were to create a magnifying glass for a space surveillance, then you would also have a magnifying glass in space, which you could focus the Earth, you know, the sunlight coming in and burn people up. I think we all see where this is going. Or melt the poles uh so let's get back to it so space mirrors in um you know space mirrors um let's let's say that's a really bad idea that could be used as a weapon i don't like it um <laughs> hit them with the space with your laser beams um was it my science project uh val kilmer the laser beam in space anyway nuke the arctic to melt the poles. Um, yeah, that's in the cover image here. Can we atomize the Arctic? Um, the idea to nuke the Arctic to melt the poles. Now, this is probably the craziest one, but wouldn't you know it, Professor Julian Huxley in 1945, biologist and secretary general of UNESCO, proposed exploding atomic bombs at an appropriate height above polar regions to raise the temperature of the Arctic Ocean and warm the entire climate of the northern temperate zones. Um, in an article titled, Can We Atomize the Arctic? Uh, they cover that in great detail. Um, I mean, you would think that this is absolutely crazy, right? Um, yeah, and all the popcorn. My, it was a great movie um, with the laser beams. Val Kilmer. If you if you're too young, you haven't watched it. Go watch it. You'll you'll get a kick out of it. Um, very relevant today. Um, so on this one, and I've got you know the original article um, images here. 
Julian Huxley talked about, you know, hey, maybe we should, you know, detonate nukes to melt the Arctic. Chat, did that happen? Did it happen? Well, they at least tried. So let's get to that. Um, right here over here on Climate Viewer 3D, I have every single nuclear detonation that ever occurred worldwide, um, you know, from places like Nevada. And you can come in here and see all of the different nuclear explosions and, you know, the holes they left in the ground. Uh, not a surprise there. And, you know, you can also see how high off the ground they were. So every nuclear explosion, 2,600 and how many? Um, 2,615 nuclear detonations. What about that Arctic? Well, we only have one up here in America. So, and it was canceled, 1962. What about the Russians? Did they try to nuke them? Oh, wait, there we go. Is that the Arctic? And is that a lot of nuclear explosions? It's like a lot of nuclear explosions to me. Oh, wait, what happened here? Oh my God, now that's a bunch. <clears throat> So yeah, nuking the Arctic to try to see if you could melt it um, happened. Definitely happened. And these ones that you see with a big pole, they happened up in the sky above it. Um, so yeah, atomizing the Arctic, I'd say uh, mission accomplished or at least tested. Um, that happened. But this is really all about that Cold War that we're talking about, about fracking the Arctic. And as we can see here, um, that is certainly occurring. Because these are fracking wells along the north slope of Alaska. The difference is, um, when you really get down to it, uh, there, there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. These are, you know, ConocoPhillips uh, stations, and I was um, actually following, or I was the one I was looking at one of these, uh, thinking about it. Was it over here? Yeah, I think it was this one. Yes, and then. I started following these gas lines and I was like, well, where the hell are all these things going? You know, they got to be going somewhere. And I just kept looking and looking and looking because there's, there's fracking wells everywhere and they're not all marked by any stretch of the imagination. That's clearly not the one I was looking at. And you know what? It's going to be damn near impossible for me to find it at this point. Um, but if you, you start looking in here, they're, they're all over the place. So in America on the northern slope of Alaska, fracking all over it, um, is occurring, has occurred, continues to occur. Um, so that's what the new Cold War is about, bottom line. Metal particle ring in uh, space to melt the Arctic. Uh, M. Gorodsky and Valentin Cherenkov proposed placing a ring of pota uh, metallic potassium particles into Earth's polar orbit to diffuse light, reaching Earth and increase solar radiation to thaw the permanently frozen soil of Russia, Canada, and Alaska and melt polar ice 1958. Um, yeah, you can't make this stuff up. That's, that's one of their proposed drawings of what this metal ring in space would look like to reflect um, sunlight and melt the Arctic. Uh, did they do that? Well, you know, Project Westford, the Westford Needles, they actually did that. 480 million copper dipole antennas launched into orbit. This is considered to be the stupidest, dumbest, most idiotic scientific experiment to date. And many of these are still in space. You can see what one of the dipole antennas looked like right here. Um, little metal particles that were released. 480 million of these were put into space. This is the X-band dipole dispenser Mark II of the Project Westford needle um, experiment. And, you know, here's an article on that. Orbiting needles to aid communication. So, once again, we have a coincidence. Somebody proposes putting a bunch of metal particles into space to melt the Arctic. Military goes ahead with a project that they say, but it's about radio waves. Um, but in the same sense, that's exactly what happened. Metal was put into space. And a lot of those are now lodged in the poles. Many of them are still floating around in space. And then finally, same year, um, 
Damn the bearing straight. Use nuclear powered propellers to melt the poles. Um, the nuclear age brought about many crazy ideas. Um, and this is a you know, obviously one of those crazy ones. Um, but in the the, the you know the all of the description here, they also talk about spreading black coal dust on the ice, creating cloud cover across the poles to trap heat. Now that sounds eerily familiar to something that I've complained a lot about. Um, and you can see that I have a lot of references on this one. Um, but the idea is uh, illustrated here of using nuclear powered 55 mile dam to actually take the warm water down here and pump it into uh, the Arctic ocean there. So, are, are all these people just crazy? Am, am, am I missing something? Am I just making something up? Or is there some you know truth to this? Well, they actually have a name for it, and it's called the New Cold War. And maybe some of you have not heard of this, but the New Cold War for Arctic drilling shows the climate change narrative hypocrisy. It illustrates it better than anything else, because at the end of the day, since 1887, when we started this short little timeline to the present day, they are fighting over the world's largest oil and gas reserves on the planet. And as you can see here, Russia lays claim to all of this. The U.S. has Barrow, Alaska, where I showed that we are fracking. These are, these are gas reserves, um, areas with high probability of oil and gas reserves in gray right here. And, you know, that's exactly where they are fracking. You can see that right here. Um, and there are hundreds and, you know, if not thousands of fracking wells across here. So while they're, t while all they're trying to tell you, you, you're bad, you're CO2 bad, um, this has been over a hundred years worth of agenda to get to this oil and gas. And they are currently fighting over this oil and gas. If you go to climateviewer.com slash Cirrus Clouds Matter. Um, in fact, I highlight this in a section. This is one of my frequently asked questions pages. And I talk about how clouds trap heat. And, um, you know, basically that they are, you know, causing melting of the poles. And, you know, a lot of this we've already covered, so I'm not going to rehash that. But down here at the bottom, you can see the actual references that cloud blanket melts, uh, warms up melting ice cap. Greenland ice sheet melts more when it's cloudy. Clouds enhance Greenland ice sheet melt water runoff. The new Cold War drilling for oil and gas in the Arctic. The new Cold War. Russia sends troops and missiles to Arctic as Putin claim, stakes a claim for region's oil and gas reserves. Counting the cost. The new Cold War. The race for Arctic oil and gas. America falling behind the new Cold War over Arctic oil. Um, I'm not making these things up. They, they have a term for it, the new Cold War. Um, and it's right there. And it's all about that gas. And it's all about that oil. So this is all legitimate. Um, of course, you know, that's been deleted. Uh, this one's still here. Greenland ice sheet melts more when it's cloudy. So what did he just say? Um, you know, to... Put some black powder over the the poles and create cloud cover across the poles to trap heat. And then, oh wait, now they're actually saying clouds enhance Greenland ice sheet um, runoff. So clouds are trapping heat. Um, and you know, I have that highlighted here that basically planes creating clouds trap heat, and melt the poles. They know this for a fact. You can read this at climateviewer.com slash Cirrus Clouds Matter. See all of the references. You can go to weathermodificationhistory.com and see all of the references 
available for the melt the arctic um section if you're in any part of weathermodificationhistory.com i have a tag cloud over here as you can see and it has things like artificial clouds carbon black dust the cia cloud ionization directed energy weapons and right here is melt the arctic um and you just click on that links already in the details you can dig into all of these read all of the references yourself draw your own conclusions in fact um i would greatly appreciate it if you did do that and if you find all, any other um you know references to this um this idea of melt intentionally melting the poles let me know and i'll add them to weathermodificationhistory.com with a plethora of references to go send those to jim at climateviewer.com um and of course know know the technology that controls your weather today um the very last link in the details is 10 technologies to own the weather today um learn what these technologies are and see how they jive with the past history of intentionally melting the arctic and the new cold war for drilling rights in the arctic and then you will see through the hypocrisy of those that want to write laws to govern your life from an international perspective for the communitarian good um meanwhile patting the wallets of the fossil fuel industry and making sure that they have the right to drill under those ice caps that they so desperately want to save hypocrites everywhere climate changers don't talk to me about climate change unless you know about the climate changers thank you all for tuning in to another throwback thursday from weathermodificationhistory.com we'll do this again next thursday check me out on uh sunday for the live chat um i'm gonna be probably 1 p.m uh eastern time on uh sunday uh, where we'll be taking your calls. You'll be able to hit that call in button. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy having those conversations. And Tuesday is always Tuesday News Day, where I recap all of the propaganda from all of the online rags and mags, um, you know, news from around the world from the entire last week, summed up in one video for you with all of the links in the references um, in the details. Appreciate you watching this one. I hope you learned something from it and uh, hit that share button because sharing is caring and YouTube only seems to care about shares now. Uh, they've thrown out the whole comment system, the like system. Please smush the like button if you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I read all of my comments on the YouTube on videos, but share it. Share it in weird, funky ways and share it often. And uh, thank you for tuning in. I'll catch you on the next one. And remember, to use this information to attack ideas, not people. Love you, mean it. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. Yeah! Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.